And we have A times A. After you do that, it's kind of a lot easier to see what is going on here. We're, we're canceling out or simplifying out factors over factors. So the same exact thing in the numerator denominator. So let's go ahead and do our variables first. What do you see simplifies? How many Bs? Two. No, one. One. one B's. One B's. Okay. We've got this B with one of these B's. Not both of them, just one. One for one. That's what we're doing here. What are we doing, by the way, when we're crossing out those B's? Are we adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? dividing. We're actually dividing. We're dividing both the top and the bottom by the same value. In this case, we're dividing by B. So B divided by B, that's why we're getting the one. B divided by B, that's why we're getting one. It's not zero, you're not just eliminating them. You're actually dividing both the top and the bottom by the same number. That's giving you one over one. That's why we can simplify. What else? A's. A's. How many A's? Two. Two. So let's do this one, this one. Good on our A's. Do we simplify this A? No. no. Can we simplify this B? No. So those are going to be remaining in my fraction at the end. Let's do the numbers now. Six, okay, six and 18. What goes into both six and 18? Six. Six, six. six is great. We want the biggest one. Six goes into six one, how many times? One. Notice how we're getting a one just like we got a one here. That's the same idea. Six goes into 18. Four. Then we have, what else? Seven. I know seven goes into seven one time. I know seven goes into 21 three, three times. Oh, we're not quite done yet, are we? Because we would have right now a 3 over a 3. Do you guys see the 3 over the 3? Yeah. If you were to write this fraction, you would get here's an A and a 3. Here's a B and a 3. That's the only thing that we have left over besides 1s. We would get 3A over 3B. Can you simplify the 3s? Yes. yes. Absolutely. You could have actually done it right here, simplified those 3s. So in either case, we're going to get that's our answer. A over B. Would you raise your hand and feel okay with these problems? Good. All right. That's fantastic. Let's talk a little bit about exponents. I think I'll end it there and we'll do division when we come back uh, after the test, okay? Because I want to give you about 20 minutes or so to answer, ask any questions on the test if you have those. Can we take fractions to an exponent? Oh my gosh, one half to the fifth power. What does the fifth power actually mean? Hmm. Five, times. Five times. Five times. So what this really means is one half times one, one half times <laughs> one. Five, Five times. times. Now we do know how to multiply some fractions. We get one half. Five times. And we know that in order to multiply fractions, even if you have more than two of them, what we do is we take numerator times numerator times numerator, all these numerators on one fraction. That's why we did one fraction. One times one times one times one times one over all the denominators being multiplied. Two times two times two times two times two. You guys okay with that so far? Yeah. We're basically just multiplying fractions, right? But I want you to think of this. Instead of actually doing the math, I want you to think of what this means. What does 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 actually one, mean? One. It is 1, but can I write it to some power? 1 to the 5th power. To the fifth. And instead of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, well, how two. can I write that? 2 to the 5th. Here's what I'm trying to show you here. What I'm trying to show you is that this is a, actually a form of an exponent rule. If you look at this, if you have one fifth, well, I'm sorry, one half to the fifth power, what that equates to is the numerator to the fifth power and the denominator two to the fifth power. So basically, if you have a fraction to the exponent, you just take the top to the exponent over the bottom to the exponent. That's what we showed right here. This is true, right? We did all this work before. So what this means is just take both one to the fifth and two to the fifth, the numerator to that power and the denominator. What is one to the fifth power? How much is that? One. one. How about 2 to the 5th power? That means 2 times 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 2
2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So this exponent is the same thing as 1 32nd. So question, do I have to show all this work? Heck no, no, no. All I need you to know is that if you're trying to do an exponent like 2 fifths to the fourth, what I need you to understand is that if we're trying to take a fraction to an exponent like this, what that means is we're taking the numerator to the exponent over the denominator to the exponent. So don't, you don't need to show me this. Just show me that you know that I'm going to do 2 to the fourth over 5 to the fourth. Because of this reason, I'm just multiplying that fraction over and over again. So all the numerators are multiplied that many times, all the denominators will be multiplied that many times. How about it? What is 2 to the fourth? Do you know? How much? 16, yeah. How's she getting 16? How about 5 to the 4th? Oh my gosh. Have you figured out 5 to the 4th? What's 5 to the 4th mean? Does it mean 20? No. No. It means 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. 625. Say it again? 625. 625, yeah. 5 times 5 is 25. Another 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 25 is 625. You do it that way. You can do 125 times 5. It also gives you 625. And you're done. The nice thing about this, I'll, I'll show you something kind of cool. nice thing about this is that you know for sure that this fraction cannot be simplified. And here's how you know that. If this could be simplified, this one would have been simpl simplified. Can you simplify two-fifths? No. So notice what you're doing. You're just writing more factors of the same numbers. None of those factors are going to cross over if they didn't cross over here. So if you have no common factors here, when you multiply more and more of them, you still have no common factors. So if this one, can be simpl if this one cannot be simplified, this one cannot be simplified either. That's kind of nice, right? So if you get a question that says, like, four-tenths to the fourth power. Simplify it first. Simplify it first. Sure. Why don't you try this one? Let's do 3 fourths to the third, and then we'll look at what it means to have negative 4 fifths to the second. So, 3 fourths to the third power. What this really does mean is 3 fourths times 3 fourths times 3 fourths. Three times. Or we can think of it, which is a, probably a quicker way to do it, we can think of it as simply. We can think of it simply 3 to the third over 4 to the third. As long as you're taking both the numerator and denominator to the same power, that's what we're doing here. How much is 3 to the third power? We can't just put 9. Okay, don't get caught in that trap of just saying, oh, 3 times 3, that's 9. Yay! No, what we're really doing is 3 times 3 times 3. That's what that means. And this is certainly not 12. We're not just doing 4 times 3. We're doing 4 times 4 times 4. How much is that? 64. Yeah. Can you see that with these exponents, your numbers grow really, really, really fast? 
I mean, if you did 4 to the 4th power, you're going to have 64 times 4 again. Wow, you're getting something like 256. I mean, that's pretty large already. So it, they keep growing very, very, very fast. Now, how about this one? Negative 4 fifths to the second power. What does that actually mean? Negative 4 fifths times negative 4 fifths. Yeah. Hey, what's a negative times a negative? Negative. Tell, tell me something then. What's going to happen every time you square a number, no matter whether it's fraction or not? Positive. No matter what. If you take a positive times itself, you are going to get a positive, right? If you take a negative times itself, a negative times a negative, that also gives you a positive. So we know automatically if we have a negative inside of our parentheses and we're squaring that, our answer is going to be positive. It's very useful to find out the sign of your answer before you actually do the math. So we know we're going to get a positive. Now we just have to do 4 squared over 5 squared. Where did the negative go? Well, we know our answer is going to be positive. How much is 4 squared, folks? 16. 16. Over? 25. As much as you can do. How many people feel okay with these exponents? That idea. Good. All right. Would you like to do division now or later? Later. later. later course, procrastinating. So we're getting continuing on with some multiplication and division of fractions. And what we learned last time is that if we have some fractions, we can certainly multiply them. We have really two, to actually three options to multiply. We multiply fractions straight across, but we really do want to continue to simplify these things as we multiply them. So for instance, if we have something like 7 over 38, times 2 over 21, times 2 over 21. I'm going to start asking you this question. Do you need what's called a common denominator to multiply fractions? What that means is do you need the same number on the bottom of your fractions to multiply them? The answer is no. And we're not going to need it for division. However, when we get into addition and subtraction, I'm previewing some information here, we will need one. And we'll talk about that towards the end of our day today. So in our case right here, we have 7 thirty-eighths times 2 20 seconds. What's the first thing we're going to do when we start multiplying our fractions? One fraction. Good. So before we actually start simplifying, I want to see one fraction. I let you do one thing. I let you extend this line and put the dot dot. You remember doing that? Yeah. This is from, from before our test. Or you can rewrite this as 7 times 2 over 38 times 21. Now, the next part, you really do have options. There's two choices for you. I'm going to show you the second choice. The first choice is you prime factorize each one of these numbers, do the prime factorization, and simplify common factors on the numerator denominator. The other thing that you do is you understand that you can divide both the numerator and denominator of fraction by the same number, and it remains the same value. It's an equivalent fraction. So we would look at this 7, 2, 38, 21. We try to see if there are any numbers that divide both a number on the numerator and a number on the denominator. So we're looking for this. I'm seeing 2 and 38. I know that a number divides both 2 and 38. What number is that? 2, two divides that. So we're going to divide both 2 and 38 by the same number, 2. And we'll write the quotient, the, the result of that, uh, in place of those numbers. So right here we'll divide 2 by 2. What's 2 divided by 2? So we cross out that 2, we put a 1. We cross out the 38, we divide 38 by 2, and we get how much? 19. Next up, we'll look for any other numbers that we might have. Is there anything else that we have here? What number divides both those? So we'll divide by 7. We divide 7 by 7, we get 1. We divide 21 by 7.